When I was going through training as a Peace Corps volunteer, I was told this simple analogy that changed the way that I see the world, literally. It's a lesson that's repeated over and over by philosophy greats such as Socrates and Rene Descartes and that I've experienced in my own travels. So now I'm going to share it with you. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Noel. Thank you for stopping by. On this channel, we talk about tips for traveling and working abroad, leadership advice, and also military lifestyles. So if any of those topics interest you, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It's completely free to you and it does actually help the channel. I'll get to the Peace Corps analogy in a minute, but the basis of it isn't anything new or unique to Peace Corps service, and it doesn't require you to do anything dramatic like live or even travel abroad, really. I do think though that it would help to provide some content to this rather simple analogy that can change the way that you see the world and interact with others in it. And for that background context, I am going to turn to Plato's The Republic. Fun fact, I was actually a philosophy minor in college and one of my favorite principles of philosophy is Plato's allegory of the cave. So a super simplified version, it goes like this. There are prisoners who live in a cave and they've been in that cave ever since childhood, shackled to the wall by their legs and their neck. So they can't see anything in the cave except for the wall that's in front of them. They can't move from the position where they're placed and they can't turn their heads to see what's behind them. Behind the prisoners though is a campfire that cast shadows on that wall which the prisoners can see in front of them. In between the prisoners and the campfire is a walkway that's lined by a low wall so the wall might be about waist high or so and the jailers will walk along that walkway and sometimes they'll carry things with them like statues or other random objects or sometimes they won't carry anything at all and they'll just walk along the pathway as they are and sometimes they'll walk alone so they won't say anything or make any sounds but sometimes they'll walk in pairs or in groups and they'll talk to each other as they're carrying these items. And to the prisoners, all they can see is that wall in front of them and the shadows that are cast on that wall. So the jailers, even though they're just men like the prisoners, to the prisoners they seem to be monsters of all different forms because the prisoners aren't able to tell that those shadows that are cast on the wall are just people who are carrying things. All the prisoners know is that which they have always seen and they believe their perspective to be the truth. Now imagine if one of the jailers approaches one of the prisoners, frees him of his chains, forces him to stand up and turn around and face the light. How does the prisoner respond to that? It's painful, isn't it? It's kind of like if somebody were to walk into your dark bedroom and then flip on the bright light switch, waking you up and forcing your eyes to adjust really quickly. It's going to take time for your eyes to adjust to that light and it's also going to hurt. The jailer shows the freed prisoner all of the other jailers walking along the pathway carrying items in their arms and he tells the prisoner that all of those figures that he once thought were monsters were actually just people just like him all along but they were carrying things in their arms. The prisoner just didn't know that. How does the prisoner respond to that? The jailer is now telling the prisoner that everything that the prisoner knew before was false. It was all just shadows. And the prisoner, now that he is able to see the true image right in front of his eyes, has to process the fact that everything that he was so sure about in the past was all false and based on an extremely limited perspective. And now the jailer drags the prisoner out of the cave and forces him into the daylight. How does the prisoner respond to that? If the light from the campfire was bad, the light from the sun is even worse. It's more painful and it takes even longer for his eyes to adjust. But as he squints his eyes and opens them a little bit more and a little bit more and gives himself time to adjust to the light, what does he see? He sees color. He sees trees. He sees mountains and rivers. The stars of the Milky Way at night. The moon in all of its phases. He sees other people, just like him, who are living happily in peaceful community with each other. In Plato's The Republic, when Socrates is teaching the allegory of the cave, he's doing so through a conversation that he's having with another man named Glaucon. And at this point in the story, Socrates says, If he again recalled his first dwelling, and the knowing that passes his the norm there and the people with whom he once was chained, don't you think he would consider himself lucky because of the transformation that had happened and by contrast feel sorry for them? And Glaucon responds, very much so. Socrates continues, wouldn't he or she prefer to put up with absolutely anything else 
rather than associate with those opinions that hold in the cave and be that kind of human being? Glockin responds, I think that he would prefer to endure everything rather than be that kind of human being. But what if the man did go back down into the cave and sat back down in his old position? He would be blinded again, but this time not by the light, but rather by the darkness. And that perspective would also take some time to adjust to. And what if he tries to explain to the prisoners that everything that they know is false, it's all just shadows? And what if he tries to tell them about what he saw when he went above ground while he's still sitting there with his eyes still trying to adjust to the darkness, barely being able to see for himself? Socrates answers this question as well. Would he not then be exposed to ridicule down there? And would they not let him know that he had gone up but only in order to come back down into the cave with his eyes ruined? And thus it certainly does not pay to go up that is Plato's allegory of the cave. Now I'm going to tell you the analogy that the Peace Corps Kyrgyzstan leadership team gave to my volunteer group during our first few months of training, and I'm going to tie it all together and bring it home. Essentially, everyone sees the world through tented glasses, and through that tent is how you perceive the world. The type of tent that you have is based on things like the culture you grew up in, the privileges that you were afforded or the privileges that you lacked, the values that your community held dear, things like that. As an American, let's say your glasses are tinted yellow. That's how you perceive the world, through yellow. Well, someone from a different culture, like a Kyrgyz person, might have glasses that are tinted blue. That's how they perceive the world. Even if you, as an American, come to Kyrgyzstan and you live with a host family, so you live in their home, you eat at their table, you speak their language, you work in their communities, you live just as they do, your glasses will never be blue because they started off as yellow. But if you allow yourself to truly immerse in their culture and open up to their perspective, then by the end of your experience, your glasses will be tinted green and that will be your new perspective. You will see the world green and you will never be able to go back to seeing things the same way that you did when you could only see through that yellow tint. And sure, yellow will still be present in the perspective that you can see in the tint that you do have, but now so will blue, and you're not going to be able to see the world the same as those who can only see yellow, because they don't understand blue. So what does this mean? Why is it important? The point is that almost all of us grew up in a cave, the caves of our own communities and the limited homogenous perspectives that they provided. It is each of our individual responsibilities to step out of our comfort zones and try to understand the perspectives of others and how they live and what they value. Yes, it will be uncomfortable. Yes, it will take some adjustment at first, but it will also free you and allow you to see this world as a much more beautiful and technicolor place. And I think that is probably the greatest benefit of traveling. And the thing is, you don't even have to go far. I mean, somebody from East Tabuga, Alabama could travel to Washington, D.C. or Portland, Oregon or Phoenix, Arizona and essentially feel like they're in a completely different culture, a different country. And really, you could just go down three neighborhoods, depending on where you live, and feel like you're in a completely different place as well. So. It's not about the distance per se, it's specifically about getting to know and understand cultures other than your own, perspectives other than your own. Doing so only benefits you and it only beautifies the world for you by making it more dynamic and diverse. And I'll close it out with this, Pocahontas, that 1995 Disney movie, the theme song of the whole movie, Colors of the Wind, the first stanza goes like this. You think you own whatever land you land on, the earth is just a dead thing you can claim. But I know every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. You think the only people who are people are the people who look and think like you. But if you walk the footsteps of a stranger, you'll learn things you never knew you never knew. I'm just saying try something new. Get out there and upgrade your glasses. If you like this video, if you learned something new, please make sure to hit that like button down below and also subscribe. It is completely free to you and it does actually help the channel and lets me know that the information that I'm providing is actually useful. I thank you for being here. I do appreciate your time and I'll see you.